Good morning. We are so glad that you have joined us for this first Sunday of Advent. Welcome here to Grace Episcopal Church in Winfield, Kansas. I'm Mother Lori Lewis, the rector here at Grace, as well as the rector at Trinity Episcopal Church in our Kansas City, Kansas. This is our Sunday worship for November 29th, 2020. As I said, it's the first Sunday of Advent. This will be a worship service of Holy Eucharist with spiritual receipt of communion. If you are new to Episcopal worship, please know that you are welcome here and allow the beauty of this worship to carry you and assure you in a loving, liberating, life-giving God. The service can be found in the Book of Common Prayer on page 355 or the online version of the Book of Common Prayer. Um, we will be putting the congregational responses on the screen for you, though, so no other resources will be needed, and you can just relax and worship with us. You are welcome also to download the service bulletin for this worship which will have the scripture readings printed in it. And you might want to read and study those through this upcoming week. Now, we begin our liturgy with our opening salutation. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us say together the Trisagion. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. Holy God, holy and mighty, holy immortal one, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and put on the armor of light, now in the time of this mortal life in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to visit us in great humility, that in the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge both the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now let us hear from the word of God. A reading from the prophet Isaiah, beginning in the 64th chapter in the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence as when the fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down. The mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who work for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you and your ways. But you were angry and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like the one who is unclean, and all of our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our inequities like the wind take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you. For you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father, we are the clay, and you are our potter. 
We are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider we are all your people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our psalm appointed for today is a portion of Psalm 80. We will pray it together in unison. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, and Manasseh, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angered despite the prayers of your people? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. You have made us the derision of our neighbors and our enemies laugh us to scorn. Restore us, O God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Let your hand be upon the man of your right hand, the son of man you have made so strong for yourself. And so will we never turn away from you. Give us life that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord of God of hosts. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. A reading from the first letter of, to the Corinthians, beginning in the first chapter and the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been enriched in him, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By him you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. 
Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about the day or hour, no one knows. Neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all. Keep awake. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. We come together through the blessing of technology, and we come together in love, the love of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy New Year. Of course, that's a church nerd joke, but this is the first Sunday of our new year, because the church looks at the year liturgically. And the first Sunday of Advent starts everything new. We go on a three-year cycle, year A, year B, and year C. Today is the first Sunday of year B. We have said goodbye to a year of Matthew's gospel for year A. And this year, we will hear mostly from Mark's gospel. But Mark's gospel is the shortest gospel, and so there will be a lovely strain of John readings off and on through the year, especially next summer. We have a lot to look forward to. So the season of Advent is about preparing our hearts for the coming of Christ. Specifically, we're looking towards Christmas when we will celebrate the coming of God incarnate in the flesh of the baby Jesus. And so we think of Advent as this this waiting and approaching that Christmas celebration. But the first Sunday of Advent is always very apocalyptic. You see, this Sunday is to remind us that yes, we're looking forward to the celebration of the birth of Christ. But we also must remember that we, the church, believe that we are also looking forward to the coming of Christ. Not just celebrating when he came as a baby. I can't remember where this quote comes from, but I I have old notes that remind me that we celebrate the coming of Christ in three ways. We celebrate the coming of Christ in history, in mystery, and in majesty. So in history, we're celebrating that first Christmas when God incarnate was born of a woman, of Mary, a little innocent Fragile baby is how God chose to enter the world. That was when Christ came in history. And we know that this man, Jesus of Nazareth, walked the earth. 
We believe he was the Christ in history. Then in mystery, we celebrate the coming of Christ. And that's now. Since the Christ of history walked the earth, we now believe and celebrate and cherish that Christ is here with us. And that's the mystery of Christ. That unseen gift of God being with us. And then we believe that Christ will come again in majesty. And last week we just celebrated Christ the King Sunday when when we focused on that Christ will come. The kingdom of God will be fulfilled. All will be revealed and made right. That is the coming of Christ in majesty. So Christ came in history, Christ comes in mystery, and Christ will come in majesty. So I mentioned we're turning now to the Gospel of Mark for this year of the church calendar. And our Gospel lesson today comes from Mark chapter 13, which is narratively speaking, during Holy Week. It's the week as Jesus has had his triumphant entry and he's preparing to be crucified. And during that week, he comes out of the temple and his disciples say to him, wow, look at this marvel made by human hands for the glory of God. Talking about the wonderful construction of the temple. And Jesus says to them, Truly, I tell you, the time is coming when not one of these stones will remain upon another and then in three days raised again. He was, of course, talking about his body being crucified, but then in three days being raised again. Jesus says, in those days after that suffering, After the temple is destroyed, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light and the stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. That's the little apocalypse. That sense of the power of heaven being ripped open and descending upon earth. And in a few short days, that happens in Jesus' context. When he is crucified, the curtain of the temple is torn in two. The sky darkens and the earth shakes. But it's also looking back toward the prophets. That's where I want to take us now, to the reading from the prophet Isaiah. This week we have from Isaiah 64. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. This is the prophet crying out on behalf of the people, God, come down and reveal yourself to us. They had the prophecies knowing, telling them that the Messiah would come, that God would come and be present with them. And they are crying out, For that now. As when fire kindles brushwood and the fire comes, causes water to boil, to make your name known to your adversaries so that the nations might tremble at your presence. God, reveal yourself once more to us as you revealed yourself to our ancestors. Bring your revelation that the world would shake. Remember I said that we celebrate the coming of Christ, the Messiah, in history, mystery, and majesty. The prophet here in 3rd Isaiah is crying out on behalf of the people for that history part, that the Messiah would come in history. And the coming of the Messiah would bring great power. 
You see, God's presence is powerful, and they knew that. And they were crying out for that power to come make things right. So now let's go back to Mark, where Christ the Messiah has come in history. And Jesus is talking about when he will come in majesty. That's his context. In his final days to tell his disciples, I will come back. You don't understand it now, but you will. The end of today's gospel lesson is so powerful to me this year. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. You see, Mark's context was to the Christians who were waiting, who were being persecuted, waiting for Christ to come in majesty. Our context is full of waiting right now. This year of all years. I have struggled with the coming of Christ in mystery. Remember I said history, mystery, and majesty. The mystery is how Christ is revealed now. We have become accustomed over a couple thousand years that that mystery is revealed when we are together in church, hearing God's love proclaimed in word, receiving the grace of God in sacrament. And that's how the mystery of Christ has been revealed to us. This year has been so different. We have been waiting and waiting. Christ says, keep awake. A few weeks ago, I talked about how we wait. That we wait actively. But now, we actually live in a time when it is best for us to wait sitting at home. But we can still be active in our waiting by calling one another and saying, remember, God loves you. By giving for God's kingdom work. And for praying together through these means. We believe when two or three are gathered, Christ is in the midst of them. And I am not so bold as to put God in a box and say, God cannot be in the midst of us when we are together in this way. So though we, we usually focus on this first Sunday of Advent in the coming of Christ in majesty, this year, I ask you to focus on the coming of Christ in mystery. We know the majesty will be there too. We believe Christ will come again, that God's kingdom will be fulfilled and that all will be revealed. But right now, right now we need that mystery. As we pray and as we sing through this Advent season for the coming of Christ, my prayer is that we will feel the mystery of the God with us, Emmanuel, in our presence now. Amen. Let us profess our faith in the mystery of Christ using the words of the ancient Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, who is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for the Most Reverend Michael Curry, our presiding bishop, and for the Episcopal branch of the Jesus Movement. We pray for the Right Reverend Kathleen Bascom, our bishop in the Diocese of Kansas. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the full communion partner of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America. In the World Council of Churches cycle of prayer, we pray for the people of Burkina Faso, Chad, Mali, Mauritania, and Niger. In the Kansas cycle of prayer, we pray for St. James, Wichita. We all fade like the leaf, and our iniquities like the wind take us away. None of us have sought after you as we ought, nor have our eyes rightly perceived your ways. Yet you, O Lord, are the potter, and we are the clay. Restore us, O God of hosts. We have been enriched in speech and knowledge of every kind, given spiritual gifts, and strengthened to make testimony to Christ. For God is faithful to those called into the fellowship of the Son. Fashion us into vessels of honor and make us useful for your work. Show the light of your countenance and we shall be saved. Be with your church this Advent season, remembering our leadership, especially Mother Lori, Mother Kathy, Deacon Tom, and Deacon Karen, and all the people of God. Restore us, O God of hosts. Keep us awake for the tasks of our generation, swift in service to justice, alert to the needs of the poor, attentive to the hungry and the migrant, and sensitive to the promptings of your Holy Spirit. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. In this season of preparation, tend the hearts of our children that they might be made ready to keep a true Christmas, open to the joy and wonder of Christ's birth, and enlivened by the message of his gospel. Restore us, O God of hosts. Be with those who are lonely as the holidays arrive, granting them the solace of your presence, the gladness of community, and the sustenance of Christian fellowship. We intercede also for those who are ill or in any kind of trouble. Please offer your intercessions. that your mercy might shine bright in their lives. Show the light of your countenance, and we shall be saved. Make us to keep watch over those things placed into our spiritual care, vigilant in stewardship, alert for the times and seasons, attuned to the gospel, always quickening to your work in the world and ready in your service. 
Restore us, O God of hosts. Hasten, O Father, the coming of your kingdom, and grant that we, your servants, who now live by faith, may with joy behold your Son at his coming in glorious majesty, even Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Again, welcome. We're glad you found us. Please click the like button. If you're watching us on Facebook, please send us a heart or a hug. Be sure and click follow us on Facebook and click subscribe on YouTube. I know this makes me sound like a YouTuber trying to make a living, but truly, when you do these things, it helps us evangelize and share the loving, liberating, life-giving God that we profess. It's all about algorithms on the internet. So please, subscribe, follow, like, heart, all those things. And then you'll also be notified when we upload another video. We usually only upload two videos a week, this worship video, as well as a shorter video of just the sermon. If you feel comfortable coming to an outdoor service, come to our lawn chair morning prayer. Each Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we gather in the courtyard at Grace and Winfield. That's at the corner of 8th and Millington. And because it's an outdoor service, we are permitted to sing. We still have our masks on. We still have physical distance between us. But throughout Advent, we will be singing, O Come, O Come, Emmanuel, in that, um, that circumstance. So after you subscribe, like, and follow, and come join us for Lawn Chair Morning Prayer, remember to donate to the kingdom work we're doing. You can send us a check to our P.O. boxes, either at Grace or at Trinity, or you can go to our diocesan webpage where they have a link for you to donate using a credit card directly to a parish, and you can tell us exactly how you want that money used. We especially right now during this season have our regular need to collect funds for the Christmas greens. We will be buying the poinsettias at both Grace and Trinity that we get each year. Um, and this is a special thing for this pandemic year that we want to support the local greenhouse and uh, still get the poinsettias. And then we'll be sure after Christmas to uh, distribute them to those who need a little joy in their homes. A reminder that on the first Sunday of each month throughout the pandemic, our online worship service is to join with the Washington National Cathedral, and that's next Sunday. On December 3rd, we, instead of producing our own worship, we will be joining together with uh, Washington National Cathedral and their amazing, beautiful uh, worship and music 
Finally, stewardship. This is the time of year when we ask you to prayerfully consider what your commitment will be to helping us fund the kingdom work of grace and trinity in the new year. So the 2021 pledge cards have gone out in the mail. You should have received one by now if we have the correct address in our uh, file. If you did not receive one, you can go to our website where you can read the letter and fill out an online pledge card that you don't have to mail. Um, so either mail in your pledge card or go to our website to fill out an electronic version that we might know what your commitment is so then we can plan what we're able to do and offer in the new year as the vestries work on creating the budget. Now, it is our custom to pray each week over those celebrating birthdays and anniversaries. I invite you to join with me. O oh God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your children as they begin another year. Grant that they may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen their trust in your goodness all the days of their lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now as we turn our hearts and minds to the altar of the Lord in Holy Communion, we remember that the grace of this sacrament is available to us even when we cannot be together to partake. And that is part of the coming mystery of Christ. And we, will we will pray to receive that grace spiritually. Walk in love as Christ loves us and gives himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. We continue with the great thanksgiving Eucharistic prayer B. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right 
to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you sent your beloved Son to redeem us from sin and death and to make us heirs in him of everlasting life, that when he shall come again in power and great triumph to judge the world, we may without shame or fear rejoice to behold his appearing. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days, you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In Him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In Him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before He died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Now, let us pray to receive the grace of this sacrament in our hearts. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. I desire to offer you praise and thanksgiving as I proclaim your resurrection. I love you above all things and long for you in my soul, since I cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood. Come spiritually into my heart. Cleanse and strengthen me with your grace, Lord Jesus, and let me never be separated from you. May I live in you and you in me in this life and in the life to come. Amen. We continue with our prayer of thanksgiving. Together, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace that passes all our understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you, shine through you to those around you, and remain with you always. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.